Uh, so once more, just to briefly introduce Ron Sharp, head of OCSLD, who's going to welcome us to FSLT 12. Over to you, Rana. Thank you. Thanks, George. And it's great to be here and to be able to welcome you to this course. I, I don't know about everyone else, but it feels like a real moment this afternoon after several weeks of preparation. There are lots of people involved in this, this course, and it's great to actually be here at this moment to launching it in this way. Perhaps uh, we could just have a few smiley faces, could we, to make sure that my volume is OK and everyone can see and hear me well? That's great. Thank you very much. So I just wanted to say a few words about who we all are on this course and what we're trying to do here. And then we'll let George go into the, the detail of it. One of the things that uh, George sent me was a participant list of everyone who's registered on the Moodle site and on the WordPress site. And those of you who, who joined us a bit later won't have heard George say that there are, I think, 130 people who've registered on Moodle and 120 who've registered on WordPress, although there's going to be some overlap between those 130 and 120. And I just did a quick wordle of your job descriptions your role descriptions, and I'll put those up here for you. And there are a couple of things that I, I wanted to say about it. So the first steps into learning and teaching is an existing course that we run for associate teachers here at Oxford Brooks. So it's not surprising that we've got lecturer coming out really uh, big there and things like teaching and assistant are words that are prominent. But there's also quite a lot of words which are more international. So being called an associate professor tends to be something that we're not called in the UK and other words there which prompted me to look at the international groupings. And I saw that we had participants on this course from South Africa, India, Netherlands, the States, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, France, Ireland, Belgium, Portugal, Guyana, Finland, Qatar, and I'm sure there are others. And I really apologize to anyone who I've missed off that list. Perhaps you could just tell us in the, um, in the text if there's someone that I've missed. But a very, very international audience. I guess some of you are here because you're genuinely looking for first steps into learning and teaching, introduction to teaching. And we've had people with teacher, trainer, um, customer service advisor for Tesco's, I think I saw on there, all sorts of different people, distance learning teachers. And some of you will be here because you're interested in the content. I guess we've also got people who are interested in the way that we're doing it in the MOOC. And that's absolutely fine. I don't, I don't mind why people are here to explore the technology, to explore this type of pedagogy, uh, to learn about the subject. And learning is a great big word that's very prominent in that picture, isn't it? Whatever reason we're here, we're all interested in the learning. So welcome to everyone and all these different types of participants that we've got. We should say a bit about who we are delivering it. You know, we are OCSLD, the Oxford Centre for Staff and Learning Development, and some of you may be familiar with us, but for those who aren't, I'll just say a, a few words about the centre that I'm head of. And we're uh, based in, in Oxford in the UK, and we design and deliver staff development for our home institution, Oxford Brookes University, but also for many other higher education institutions across the UK, across the globe, and other organisations as well. And this is just a snapshot from our website. But you can see there that we've got courses for other institutions. And we've also got online courses uh, showing up here. So we have been running online courses in, in some form for a number of years. But, and some of you may have done them, which, which would be great. But they have been online courses that have taken place within our virtual learning environment. They've been very strongly based on principles of collaborative learning. And they've been you know, uh, a cohort based, clear start time, clear end time, um, and lots and lots of group tasks. So we run courses for online tutors um, and those interested in using technologies in their teaching. But we also run them on kind of hot topics, if you like, in higher education. So the one that's just finished is teaching international students, uh, I think. And George Roberts and his team have really been challenging us to think um, a lot more carefully about the models that we've been using to underpin the design of our online courses. And started with a course called Extending Your Online Course, which uh, ran a couple of years ago for the first time, which just tested out, if you like, some of the first principles of openness. It was our first attempt at some of the principles of openness. And, and George took that course 
out of the uh, boundaries of our virtual learning environment, the private password protected boundaries, and ran some of it in open, um, in, in public spaces on the WordPress site, in the blog, and on Twitter. And that's a big change for us to try and run things more publicly. And this MOOC is an extension, I guess, of that work that we tried to do first in extending your online course. So how do we get more open than that? And what kinds of things are we wanting to do? And I chose this, this picture here, which I got from the Wiki Educator site on, on OER, because George is trying to always tell me about uh, closed is past and open is future, and this is the way that we need to be thinking about openness, not just open educational resources, that's only part of it, but a, a whole wide view of openness. So as George alluded to earlier, this particular course, First Steps into Learning and Teaching, is funded by the UK uh, Higher Education Academy and the Joint Information Systems Committee, the JISC, uh, under a funded strand where they were particularly looking at how uh, universities that run postgraduate certificates in teaching and learning, which tend to be the courses in the UK that are for new lecturers in the universities, how they can make use of OERs. And we thought, well, yes, we could look around and see what kind of open educational resources are available for lecturers to improve their teaching and learning. And we could integrate those into our existing largely face-to-face, -face, a bit blended delivery course. Or we could do something just a little bit different, building on our experience of running the Extending Your Online course in a bit more public forum. So we decided to bid for this idea for a MOOC, and, and we're delighted to be successful in that. And what we're trying to do is to run as much as we can publicly uh, to make use of open educational resources and to play around with as many of the principles of openness as we possibly can. I can see lots of things coming up in the chat here saying it's totally different. Yes, I think it is totally different. I think it's going to feel different as we start to engage in it. And I think we all have to um, take a deep breath and be prepared to experiment a little bit with this. So even the warnings that George started with about uh, is it OK to record, these are still quite new ideas for us. Is it OK to take what usually happens in a private classroom and make it publicly available? And how do we all feel about not just being seen in that environment, but learning in that environment? And learning you know, is, is a time when we make mistakes and we trip up and we don't necessarily always want to show people that. So we just have to be prepared to experiment, I think. So it is part of a, a funded project, and that's great because it's given us an excuse to do something which we wanted to do anyway, which we were very keen to do. Um, and we've been able to draw together this experienced team to help to design and run, to run the MOOC. Some of the things, I guess, that we're wanting to do, and George will go on and give a bit more detail about what the experience is going to be like for you as participants in the course, but certainly in our thinking about it, we have a resource repository within our institution, Oxford Brooks here, as I'm sure many of you do within your own institution. And some of us have been working quite hard to put our teaching materials within that institution, that institutional repository that's only available to other Brooks staff. So that's one of the things that we wanted to do is say, OK, let's take our teaching materials out of the filing cabinet in the individual lecturer's office, put that in the repository. But also, we're interested in releasing our materials to our, our community of peers, our, our community of other educational developers around the globe running courses like this for lecturers. And what are they going to make of our materials? So that's a, a much wider release. We're also, you would have seen in some of the course materials that we've been producing, we're um, not only producing materials ourselves, but referring you to other OERs that we have uh, found and identified and quality checked and see how they fit in with our course. So there are issues here about aggregation and remixing and repurposing of existing OERs to enhance the course materials that we're producing and to supplement them. We hope that as well as that aggregation that we're doing in the course team, that you will also help us with that and engage with that, whether that's through sharing your citations, your annotations, making your own contributions to the course materials. So we're shifting here from a very teacher-centered model to something that you can participate in. 
As I said earlier, we've always designed our courses around principles of collaborative learning, but this idea of distributed collaboration is a little bit different. We've tended to run courses with no more than 24 participants on and been very strict about that, that we're looking for small groups and collaboration takes place within a small group who are known to each other and do a lot of introductions and icebreakers and very gently develop more sophisticated group learning techniques. This distributed collaboration is completely different. You start with a three-figure number, hundreds of students, and expect them to collaborate. So we'll see how that goes. And that is part of this community-based learning pedagogy. And then I suppose just to finish before I hand back to George, we're very keen on widening access. I listed off the, the countries at the beginning of, that represent in the, in the participants list. And I think it's really important to us that we are going beyond our usual communities of either people in higher education or people just in the UK to widen access across the globe and to people um, who might not usually be able to access our fairly expensive online courses. And that's something that certainly in SSOD we are very committed to doing. So particularly welcome feedback from people who haven't engaged in this type of course before. So I really hope that you enjoy the next few weeks. And I'm very much looking forward to watching and seeing what happens and how we turn this idea of a MOOC into a reality. And I think George is going to say a little bit more about the detail of what's going to happen on the course. Thank you very much, Rona. That was brilliant. Can I just? Again, calling people's attention to the little emoticons and smiley faces, we can give our, a round of applause in the usual fashion. Uh, Rona, thank you for uh, introducing us to this course. And thank you for mentioning some of the key themes, um, particularly social citation, annotation, um, distributed collaboration, uh, which are the ways that we will be working throughout this program. And indeed, we're already starting to see in the discussion forums over in the Moodle. 